This is the All Saints Bible Study, where the Word of God is alive with power. If you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Our God and Father, through you we move and we have our being as we approach your word. It is our prayer. We're able to glean the true intent of the scripture according to your will. And therefore, we are empowered to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Well, I just want to share a word with you today in this Bible study. It comes from Philippians, the second chapter, uh, verses five through eight. Let this mind be new, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death of the cross. Well, I tell you, this scripture is really a, a rather explicit scripture. Also, it serves as a challenge for the believers in Christ Jesus. Now, this being Palm Sunday, uh, as we are quickly going into, as uh, the church has described it, as Holy Week. Now, there's something very interesting about as Jesus in his majestic triumph entry into Jerusalem, it marks a journey. In this particular scripture in Philippians, it gives us a summary of the journey of Jesus. See, the journey encompasses his entry into Jerusalem, all to, ultimately, I should say, to the cross, from triumph entry into the cross. Now, this is something you, or unto the cross, something you have to understand about this, this portion of scripture, this journey in which Jesus uh, took was his entry into Jerusalem is symbolic of him being in heaven with God and he humbles himself. And so the entry into Jerusalem parallels Jesus' existence in heaven. However, after the entry into Jerusalem, Jesus goes through a process of humility. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on the cusp of his death, Jesus humbles himself unto the will of the Father. And so in, in Philippians, it tells us he takes from, from eternity, the, the majesty of eternity, but ultimately he humbles himself. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says unto God, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. In Philippians, the scripture tells us what Jesus did, how he took that journey. It provides us a summary. I hasten to say, I hasten to say, this journey that Jesus took, believers in Christ Jesus, and I submit, believers in Christ Jesus must engage in a journey similar, or just, if you allow me to say, just like Jesus, where we must humble ourselves. We must be willing to take on humility, willing to partake of suffering, selfless love, love of the other, not to engage in self-centered pursuits. This is the journey of Jesus. This must be the journey of the believers in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Palm Sunday is a journey, is triumph into, it begins, it initiates, I should say, the journey of humility of Jesus with the ultimate climax being the death, his death on the cross. Now, I had a very interesting conversation with a co-worker and he had issues with church people. Ty Tribbett even had issues. He, he talks about the, the church systems being whack. Well, we must come to terms with this perception that the church has today. You see, if we are, if, if believers, and I believe there are believers who are engaging in this journey of humility, these are the true believers. This is the true church. 
which is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. Now, we have this perception because there are people who do not fully understand what it means to be a believer in Christ Jesus. And many have succumbed to a variety of doctrines which runs counter to the example of Jesus the Christ. It's unfortunate because we have folks who are judgmental. Uh, we have people who pursue prosperity. And I tell you, prosperity is not the journey of the believer. The, the, it does not coexist. It is not biblical. And so we have to understand who Jesus was, what the example of Jesus was, and the significance of that example. For Jesus is the prototype every believer must be willing to follow. And so what we have today, there is this misperception. A lot of folks do not want to attend church because the church people, they do, they are not really uh, church people. They are not really Christians. Well, I hasten to say going to a worship service does not mean church. You see, the church, the body of Christ, the believers are engaging in being the church, not just within a worship experience, but the, the church has the, the mandate from Jesus to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus also says, you are to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all of thy mind. And he says, second is like unto the first, to love your neighbor as yourself. This is what it means to be the church, to proclaim the gospel, to love the Lord thy God, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. And I'll add something to that, to pursue the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, is what encompasses of in being a believer in Christ Jesus. Now, these folks, they are the church those who are living out the example of Jesus. It's not limited to a congregation. The church is not limited to a denomination. It is the believers in Christ Jesus who embrace the humility of Jesus, the will of God, live out this love, live out this humility, pursue the righteousness of God and proclaim the gospel. I submit that is the true church. Very interesting concept. Ty Tribbett talks about the church being whack, the church systems being whack. Well, these systems uh, are of, of human ingenuity, human creation. And of course, where you have humans who have created something, there isn't going to be perfection. And so we must be able to distinguish between the two tradition, denominations, church systems compared to being the church. And so I pray that we endeavor to be the church, to be the believers in Christ Jesus. Therefore, the church isn't whack. True church people are people of love, people of humility, who will love you more than they love themselves. That is the true church. And I'm so happy to say the true church is alive and well in the earth. One point that we must understand about this church, this true church, there's going to come a time when Jesus is going to come and to rapture his church out of this world. And I tell you, when the church is raptured, the world is going to change in a most negative way. It's going to usher in the time of tribulation. So I want to say the church, the true church, is the essential element that provides, allows a balance to exist in the world. Even though there's chaos, it could be worse if the church isn't in the world. So I pray you got something out of that. And I pray that you endeavor to be the church, understand the, the true church, the body of Christ as compared to congregations, denominations, 
or uh, traditions that has been created by me. It is the true church, the body of Christ, which is the greatest jewel that the world has today. Maybe you'd like to become a part of that body of Christ, become a part of that church. And this is the beauty of it. It's so easy to become a part of the body of Christ. If you just pray this simple little prayer, tell you what, pray with me today. Put your hand in your handheld device, maybe your laptop and maybe even your iPad and, and, and pray with me and pray this prayer by faith. Lord, I believe that you are the son of the living God and that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that God, the father raised you from the grave. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me a new creature. I want to be part of the body of Christ. Fill me with your spirit so I'm empowered to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This I pray in Jesus' name. Thank God, amen, and amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, you're a part that quickly of the body of Christ because of the shedding of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what enables you to pursue this walk is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Receive it. Go to Acts 1 and 8. Go to the book, I'm sorry, go to Acts, the second chapter in the fourth verse, and, and you see how the believers, they receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Also in Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said that after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power to be witnesses of me. So please receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Embrace the humility of Jesus. Live out the love. Live out the pro proclamation. You are being the church. Blessings to you.